OK, so in the next set of slides, what I'm going to do is introduce some concepts from optimization. Uh, more specifically, I'll give a very high level and brief introduction to trust regent methods. Part of it is because next week we're going to have two papers uh, that are based on, on some advances in, in optimization. In particular, the first one is um, called uh, trust region policy optimization, and then it is essentially uh, leveraging some of the work from, from trust regent methods. So in any case, even if the course is not about optimization, I thought it'd be useful to at least introduce some of the basics for this. And then in particular, you know, if uh, whoever is going to be presenting or anyone who's going to be critiquing uh, that paper, then this should help you uh, with, with um, I guess, the, the set of slides that I'm presenting. Okay, so in optimization uh, for machine learning, um, it is quite common, in fact, to think of machine learning as really just uh, some form of optimization. So, so we can tackle machine learning in many ways, but what is by far the most popular approach is to formulate an objective and then optimize it. And so some of the objectives that are common include minimum squared error, there's minimum cross entropy, maximum log likelihood, or in this course for reinforcement learning as well, maximum discounted sum of rewards. Okay? So, so yeah, so this makes it clear that many of the algorithms for machine learning do rely heavily on optimization. But now, how do we optimize these objectives? Uh, there's essentially two important classes, um, line search methods as well as trust regent methods. Now line search methods are by far perhaps the simplest and most well-known techniques because they include gradient descent and then gradient descent has been the workhorse in, in terms of optimization within machine learning, uh, especially with the packages that we have out there. Okay, so line search methods, including gradient descent, what do they do? They first find a direction for improvement, and then after that, they'll take a step uh, in that direction, and, and then the idea is that then you try to optimize that step so that you make uh, some, some good improvement. Okay, um, in contrast, if we consider trust regent methods, then in their case, it's sort of like the other way around, and then you can think of them as some sort of dual to line search methods. So here you first select a trust region, um, and here you can think of the trust region as really being some upper bound on a step length. So in other words, it's almost like you're starting with the step length instead of finishing with the step length here. Okay, so the idea is that we're going to define some region around our current estimate and then we're going to search in that region and then because that region is bounded then we obviously cannot have a step length that's going to be too large so the step length is bounded by the size of the region. And then after that we're going to do a search in that region so we're going to find a point that improves the region. Now just to be concrete, um, let me draw um, some information here. So perhaps, okay, for line search, right, so you could imagine that maybe um, we have um, some region that has uh, some contours that might look like this um, and so on. And now if we would like to find the maximum, which happens to be here, let's say, right, then um, if we are at this location, then a line search would essentially pick a direction. It doesn't have to be necessarily the steepest uh, direction, just some direction of improvement. And then, so it could be this direction. And then after that, we're going to decide what would be the size of, of that step length. So we want to go in that direction, but how far should we go? And, and here, there are various ways of doing this, various, uh, I mean, the, the, there's a whole literature, there are books written about how to select the step size and how to select the direction. But that's the idea with, with line search. Now, with trust region, so again, we, we have, let's say, some surface um, that could correspond more or less to uh, the same thing. So here I'm drawing some arbitrary contour lines, okay? 
Um, and then again, I'm in some point, so I've got a current estimate. And now what I do first is decide on a region that I'm going to search in. And then so this region, uh, I feel I'd like to use a different color, but I don't have any other color, so it'll just be white again. But let's say that this region uh, corresponds to this circle here. Okay, so this is going to be the region in which I'm going to search. Okay, and then after this, what we do is we formulate um, an optimization problem um, that uh, looks only at this region and tries to find uh, the best uh, solution in there. So let's say that we find a, a good solution that, that is here. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily the globally optimal solution. Again, we would like to get an improvement. In some cases, we'll be able to find a globally optimal solution within the region, but not always. Right, so it will depend on whether this optimization is convex or not. Once we're here, then we're going to form again another region. So I'm going to draw another circle, right? And then I'm going to search again in that region for um, a, a, a nice point that improves. And then perhaps I'll end up here, OK? And then so we would essentially have several steps like this. In this case here, you see we took a step. We end up here. Then we ask for a new direction. Perhaps it goes here and, and so on. Okay, so we're going to have essentially in both cases uh, some iterations where we end up with new estimates, but then the philosophy is different. Here we pick a direction, make a step. Here we pick a region, find a point that's good in, in that region. Okay. Now, why should we consider trust region <coughs> methods, or what's the advantage? of having an approach like this where we pick a region. So the idea here is that many, in many situations, the objective that we want to optimize, let's call it F, is going to be complex. Okay, so um, in fact, I mean, in this course with reinforcement learning, um, the objective is quite complex because, especially for doing deep reinforcement learning, there will be uh, some, some uh, neural networks. Um, where we might look at the temporal difference uh, based on two neural networks. There might be, in fact, uh, a convolutional neural net that's combined with a recurrent neural net if, if it's partially observable. So we're going to have some really complex uh, mathematical functions that, that we're optimizing over. Right? So, so then uh, that's problematic because then doing the optimization based on this uh, is, is not easy. So one way to get around the complexity is to say, well, let's just approximate f with something that's going to be simpler. And I'm going to call that f tilde. Okay, so I'm going to search. Uh, well, it's not search, but I guess I'm, I'm simply going to make an approximation and work with this simpler objective. And then what I'll do is solve my optimization problem with respect to that simpler objective and use that as, as a solution or otherwise as a new estimate. So, so this is a good approach. However, there's a problem, right? So the problem is that the optimum we're going to find, this x tilde star, which is really the optimum based on f tilde, right? It might be in a region where f tilde poorly approximates f. Okay, so if I go back here, right, so maybe I'm in at this location, right, and now I'm going to approximate my surface. So my surface is my objective. I'm trying to find, let's say, the maximum of, of this surface, right, so, so I approximate it. And now because I did an approximation, it's possible that I'm going to uh, I obviously uh, have an easier time to find the solution, but then I'll, I might find a solution that, that's misleading because of the approximation. Right? So maybe the best solution I'm going to find is really due to the fact that my approximation at some point becomes, um, uh, well, fairly rough. And, and then uh, I end up with, with a solution that is far from optimal. So that's, that's a potential problem. And in fact, you see, if we have very good optimization techniques, they're going to exploit everything possible into the surface. And then so that approximation might just lead us in the wrong direction. So one solution to this is to say, well, we're going to restrict the search to a region that we trust. 
And what we mean here by a region that we trust in would be a region where we believe that our approximation f tilde is going to approximate f well. Okay? So that's why in this picture here, uh, the idea is that I've, I've got my current estimate, and then I, I will use an approximation uh, for my entire surface. But then most of the time when I form an approximation, I can often form this approximation to be good at a certain point, in fact, to match exactly the value at my current point. And then after that, you know, the approximation will still be good nearby, but it will degrade gracefully. And then eventually, it, you know, at some point, there, there's, the approximation is just, just becomes too rough. Okay? But generally speaking, a lot of approximation techniques work this way, where you have a point, you match exactly, then it degrades gracefully, and at some point you cannot trust the approximation anymore. So if that's the case, then let's simply bound the region in which we're going to do the search, and let's make sure that's a region that we can trust, where we think that we have a good approximation. So as a concrete example, um, what is common to do is to approximate f tilde by a quadratic function. Okay? Here we can use a Taylor's expansion uh, for any function. I can simply uh, do a Taylor's expansion up to a degree 2, so this will give us a quadratic approximation. And the idea is that then uh, this would be roughly equal to um, the function evaluated at a certain point c. Uh, plus the gradient at that point C, um, and then plus here some other term that's quadratic that depends on the Hessian. Okay, so here uh, the gradient corresponds to first order derivatives, the Hessian corresponds to second order derivatives, and this term here is quadratic because I've got x on both sides. Right? So any function in general can be approximated through uh, a second, uh, well, a, a, a quadratic uh, function like this, and, and that tends to, to, to produce good results. Um, so in fact, Newton's method can be thought as, as doing that. Okay, so now the problem with this, again, is that here we're going to have a good approximation. In fact, the approximation is going to be exact at C, but then as I go away from C, so if X is far from C, Right, then my approximation is going to degrade, and, and then I might not want to trust my approximation. So, so then what I do is I introduce a region. For instance, I could simply use a hypersphere where I simply bound the Euclidean distance between x and c to be less than delta. So, okay, so here delta is a threshold, it, it's, it's a parameter, uh, and it defines the size of my trust region. So, okay, here's a, a generic algorithm for trust region methods. The idea is that we start with some bound delta. We start with an initial estimate x0, and then we're, let's say, at iteration 0. Then we repeat uh, this loop, and at every step, what I do is that I'm going to solve um, what is known as a trust region subproblem. So, in other words, I'm going to solve uh, my... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to solve, uh, well, I'm going to minimize my approximate objective. So this is here f tilde. So I, so I solve for my approximate objective subject to um, this truss region, which is in this case here just um, uh, a hypersphere that has uh, a size at most delta. Okay, and this is with respect to my previous estimate. Um, so then... Once I obtain the solution for this, then I can check perhaps how good is my approximation versus my true function at that point. If the two are fairly close, perhaps this was okay. Perhaps, uh, you know, I was a little too conservative and maybe I can simply increase delta so that at my next step, I will, I will be able to search further. But if, if the approximation was not good, then it means that uh, I was a little too aggressive and perhaps I need to make now my region smaller and, and then I will decrease delta. So here, the precise techniques for increasing and decreasing delta, there's a whole literature about this. And, and I mean, that's not the point of this course, but at least here you should understand at a high level 
how a trust regent methods work. So it's this general idea where you alternate between solving uh, a, a trust region subproblem with our approximation, often just a quadratic approximation. And then after this, you simply adjust uh, the region size and then you repeat like this until convergence. Yes? One quick question. Isn't, for example, if I want to optimize a neural network and I have 10,000 of parameters, isn't calculating the Hessian matrix already extremely computationally expensive? Absolutely. So, yeah, so here, one problem with what I just described um, is that, yeah, if we use a quadratic approximation and then we have to compute the Hessian and we have thousands of parameters, it will be quadratic in this thousand and this will not be scalable. But that is uh, by far, you know, the most popular techniques in optimization. Historically, they were not dealing with so many parameters. And, and then um, the problem is that there's a trade-off. Here, if we want to have a good approximation, it helps to look at second order derivatives. There's quadratically many of them, but, but then uh, it, it will give us a better approximation. If we don't use the Hessian, and in fact, there's a whole literature on uh, techniques that uh, will only use first order information or otherwise some sparse version of that or something in between and then they will scale better but then they have less information so perhaps the approximation is not as good and then they need to work with a trust region that is smaller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So, so yeah, Newton's method, you don't typically define a, a, a region per se. So what I meant is, I guess, Newton's method does this type of quadratic approximation to the function as well. And then, so a lot of methods can be seen as extending or otherwise modifying Newton's method by including uh, some, some trust region. Yeah. Right, so okay, if, if we um, simply uh, have the, the, the gradients, in other words, the, um, the first, um, first order um, partial derivatives, uh, so it could be a line search or not. So in fact, one of the techniques um, that is popular here, um, which is to find the Kochi point, uh, would in fact not work with a quadratic approximation here, but just uh, a, a linear approximation, but it would still be um, uh, a trust region because you would still include this as a constraint. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so then, um, yeah, let, let me just make a few comments. Now, what about solving that uh, trust region sub problem? So here, if we go with the full quadratic, the problem is the Hessian might or might not be uh, positive semi-definite. If it is positive semi-definite, this is great. We've got a convex optimization problem. And then there are some simple techniques that will find a globally optimal solution. Okay? But if H is not positive semi-definite, then we are in, in the non-convex case. And then it's much harder. However, there are some heuristics that can guarantee some improvement. In fact, this is where, for instance, the Kochi point technique that I was mentioning earlier can be used, where it would use just uh, here the, the first order derivative and ignore the second order derivatives. So you would just um, essentially find a solution to this constraint problem, but there would still be uh, a, a constraint here, so, so then it would still be a, a trust region method. Okay, so in any case, there, there's a whole literature on this. 
And it's something fascinating. And then we're going to see next lecture, I guess, one paper that um, does leverage that literature in the context of, of policy optimization techniques. OK, so let's stop here. And then uh, yeah, we'll see some exciting other papers next class.